10 expert knitting hacks that will change your knitting life. Hi everyone, Norman here. The internet is full of knitting hacks to save time and money. You could use simple loops of yarn in a contrasting color as stitch markers. You could use simple rubber bands or corks as needle stoppers. And pouring boiling water over your circular needles will help to straighten them out. But most of these knitting hacks have one thing in common. They offer little value to an experienced knitter. If you already have a beautiful yarn bowl, why would you use an old pitcher as a cheaper alternative? So in this video, I want to show you all together 10 knitting hacks that will let you knit faster, better, easier or neater. So let's dive right into it and please don't forget to comment with any useful knitting hacks that changed your life. Are you tired of losing track of your pattern? Was this row 9 or 10? Well, then absolutely consider creating a little viewfinder for your patterns. Just add two vertical cuts to a piece of cardboard or paper and then pull your pattern through like this. And with every row you knit, you pull the pattern up one bit. But it gets better yet if you put your pattern in a clear sheet protector. You can use a sharpie and simply cross out the sections that you've already knitted and reuse the pattern later on. Or of course you could use post-its to mark the spot where you currently are. And if you are using a book you can also create a simple pattern bookmark to keep track of things. Only requires two or three more cuts and then you can follow your pattern like this. Obviously you would have to adjust the size according to your book. Easy as that. Of course in the long run you might still want to learn how to read your actual knitting because that will truly change your knitting long term. I'll link you my tutorial up in here. Use filler rope to avoid fold lines. If you've ever blocked a tubular project like a socks or a hat then you probably know that you often end up with permanent fold lines around the edges that might not look very pretty depending on your project. Now of course there are sock blocking boards like this one here, always a good investment as a knitter. But sweater blocking boards while they exist can be ridiculously expensive and for some shapes like hats or so they aren't even available. Enter the filler rope. You can get these at the local hardware shop for five dollars or less. They sell under different names but basically it's just a thin foam rope used for caulking. But you could also insert them into the sleeves of your sweater and you know then lock the edges around that rope and ta-da, no more fold lines. Just make sure that you get a rope that isn't all that thick or you know carefully uh, cut it in half. And if you are super crafty you could use an old wire hanger and bend that into the shape of your feet or your hat and turn it into a blocking board. Upgrade it by gluing it in between two halves of the filler rope and you have an awesome made to measure professional blocking board. Interchangeable knitting needles are a true game changer. Once you bought a set you will always have the right needle size at your home and you can change the length of that cord according to your project. But that is only half of the story. You can also use them to attach a different needle size on each end. So 4.5 millimeter needles here and maybe 6 millimeter needles here. Why would you do that? Well, here are two very helpful hacks. First, whenever you are knitting in the round using circular needles, 
the left needle, so this needle here, only acts as a stitch holder. You will never actually knit a single stitch with that needle. You always do that with the right needle. So simply pick a needle that is one size smaller and that will make it so much easier to enter the stitches while the right needle will define your gauge. And here is the second application. Some people have problems with their pearl or knit tension. One of them is always a bit looser and their stockinette stitch ends up looking like this and not like this. Well, when you're knitting flat, you always knit the right side with the same end of the needle and the wrong side with the other end of the needle. So, if your purl stitches are too loose and it looks a bit like this, then just knit the wrong side rows with one needle size smaller. So here I'm using 4.5 millimeter needles for the purl side and 5.5 millimeter needles for the right side and then I just purl across using the smaller needles to fix that loose tension. Obviously this only works for stockinette stitch. And here's another application of the same principle. Some people have problems with counting rows or telling the wrong side apart from the right side. Well, you can also a attach a different needle on the other end. So in this case I went for a wooden needle. Or use a sharpie or some nail polish to mark one end of your needle. And then whenever you come across say the wooden needle you know this is the wrong side or this is a row where I need to place a decrease or so. Use eyelets to keep track of your needle size. Have you ever tried to get gauge? Well, often you end up knitting multiple swatches. And then in there you can simply knit a couple of eyelets in the first round or row. Just do a yarn over followed by a knit two together. And the number of eyelets in that first row indicate the needle size you use. So in this case I used needle size 4 millimeters. To mark fractional sizes you can then add a purl stitch or knots in the tail. So for example for needle size 4.5 millimeter needles I could do four eyelets and one purl stitch. You can also use the same system for any other work in progress. For example sometimes you abandon a project or park it on a piece of scrap yarn or a spare cord because you need the needles. And then you can tie a couple of loose knots into the tail to indicate the needle size you used because who knows when you're gonna pick up that project again. Now before I show you six more hacks like this I wanted to highlight that if you enjoyed these tips so far definitely consider supporting me on Patreon. It takes hours upon hours to create a video like this even though it may seem simple and actually it wouldn't be possible without the support of my patrons. So if you want to see more videos like this here on this channel and if you want to access special knitting tips and patterns then definitely head over to patreon.com and support my work. You'll find the link in the description below. Even a small contribution helps and you can cancel any time no questions asked. Use hairpins to organize tails. Loose tails can cause a lot of trouble. When you store your yarn, consider using old hairpins to secure those tails. No more tangles in your precious stash. And when you actually start knitting you can use that very same hairpin to secure your cast on tail. This is especially helpful for projects where you need to leave a longer tail for seaming or you do a provisional cast on and so on and that way you can ensure that your tail never gets in the way or creates one big tangle with your working yarn and so on. Organize your connectors and pins with stitch markers. Before I was talking about interchangeable knitting needles and most of them come with tons of accessories that are prone to getting lost. If you own a Chagu or Haya Haya set then you will probably know these little plastic pouches where um, 
where they store or where they sell these little connectors. And what you can always do is, because these pouches aren't very pretty and they aren't very practical either, you can attach those little adapters and connectors to a simple bulb shaped stitch marker and then pin that to your pouch. And there you go. They are secure, you can instantly find them and they can't get lost. The same trick works for the little keys or pins you need to um, close the connections of the Knitter's Pride sets. So you can also attach them to a little stitch holder and put that into your project bag so they don't get lost. Some of these sets also use these T-pins and you can't thread them on a uh, stitch marker. However, you could sew in, you know, a little pin cushion and then just stick them in. By the way, there is a knit along available for this cute little heart here on my channel. And if you own a char goose set, Ah, uh, here's one very, very special tip. I'm usually not the biggest fan of their needles, but these pouches are very smart. So have you seen these little pockets here in front of the actual needle pockets? Well, I never really understood what they are for, but what you can do is take your scissors and always undo two of these seams, leaving one here in the middle. And then, now watch, you can use this to insert your spare cords. Isn't this genius? Number seven, use stitch markers to keep track of your progress. I don't know about you, but I have a super hard time counting. I get distracted so, oh look there, a squirrel. And if you are like me, you can use these simple bulb shaped stitch markers to keep track. Here are three helpful tips. Number one, when casting on, I always place a stitch marker after every 10 or 20 stitches. So after 10 stitches, I place a stitch marker and then I continue casting on. And after another 10 stitches, I will place another stitch marker and so on. And that way, even if I lose track, oops, even if I lose track, I can always look back at the stitch markers and instantly know how many stitches I've already cast on and how many I still need to cast on. You can also place a stitch marker after every 5, 10 or however many rows you like and this will make counting so much easier than you simply have to count those stitch marker instead of every single row. And with stock and knit stitch it might be easier but when you're knitting lace or so it often can be much harder. You can use the very same trick and attach a little stitch marker to every decrease or increase you've made. For example, when you're knitting sleeves or so, you often have to increase or decrease every eight rows and then just simply pierce every little increase or decrease with a stitch marker and that will make counting so much easier and keeping track. What you can also do is in the very first row or round, you place a stitch marker here after the first stitch. And on every right side row, you move it in one stitch. And then you can simply count the stitches before for the stitch markers to instantly know how many rows you've knitted. In the round this is easier, if you're knitting flat you obviously have to multiply this number by two. Oh and here's a little tip that really helps me counting. I've shared this before but as it's just so good I think it deserves another spotlight. When I count stitches, I always count in twos and threes. So I don't count like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I don't count like this. I count like this. Two, three, two, three is ten. Two, three, two, three, twenty. Now maybe a different combination works better for you. Maybe you want to group your stitches into twos only or in four, eight, twelve and so on. Or maybe you can even manage five. Five, 10, 15 or 
or so. Really, whatever works for you, but grouping those stitches makes counting so much faster. Two, three, two, three, ten. In front of me are some Chaogu minis. These are super small circular needles. Some people use to knit small diameter tubular projects in the round without using the annoying magic loop technique. For me and my hands that never worked out for anything but plain stock knit stitch which I rarely knit. But I do think these are the best stitch holders ever. So for example when you're knitting gloves or mittens you often have to put stitches on hold and then I use these mini needles and simply slip them to the cord, detach the tips, attach a needle stopper and continue knitting and later on when it's time to pick up these stitches again I reattach the tip and slip them back. I mean of course you can do the same with scrap yarn but what experienced knitters will be able to tell you that it's quite annoying to pick up stitches uh, using scrap yarn because often the stitches kind of well they, the last stitches get smaller and it's very difficult for larger projects of course I don't know when you're knitting a sweater or so and you put stitches for the armholes or the neckline on hold you could use a regular interchangeable knitting needle set and some spare cords but for those tiny projects these mini needles are just perfect. Avoid twisting the yarn. Most knitters will know this problem. After you've knitted, I don't know, 20 rows or so, your working yarn starts to curl up like this. This is not only annoying, but can actually lead to half knots. Besides, eventually this will unbalance your yarn and it might transfer the extra twist into your fabric and this could be one of many reasons why you end up with a biased fabric with a visible slant to either side. To avoid this, simply switch between turning your work clockwise and then once you've finished the return row, you turn around counterclockwise. If you always turn your work around clockwise or counterclockwise, one of two things might happen. Either you will slowly untwist your yarn and the plies will come apart and this will make your thread so much weaker. Or you add twist and this will be transferred into your fabric and add a little bias. A lot of people will observe a similar thing when they do the long tail cast on. After 10 or 20 stitches you will notice how the plies here will come apart. To avoid this simply cast on two or three stitches and let the tail balance itself out. Cast on two or three stitches let the tail balance itself out. So that's the secret. If you continue, I mean I know it's faster, but if you continue that way the plies will always come apart and ultimately this will not create a neat cast on edge. A similar thing will happen when you wind your yarn into a yarn cake and then do a center pull. Often you end up twisting or untwisting your yarn. That's why I say Put your yarn cake on a spindle like that and unwind it like this. Because as you wind the yarn, you add twist. See it's spinning around. So when you unwind it, you need to balance it out by turning it into the other direction. If you don't, you store twist or you untwist the yarn. And this little yarn cake brings me to my next tip. Use yarn labels, don't throw them away. A yarn label is full of vital information and you should consider carefully if you want to throw it away. Here are two suggestions. So first of all, when I wind my yarn cakes, I do it around the yarn label. 
That way I can always retrieve uh, the information and see, okay, this is a Laceon 100% wool and here on the back I can see the care instructions. If for whatever reason you prefer to do a center pulse, then you can of course also store the label here on the outside and you can retrieve that later on. And if it is a gift, make sure to include this yarn label or the care instructions on a little piece of paper or whatever. Or if it's socks, you can often use the label and you know pull the socks through or something like that. That way the care the vital care instructions for your precious hand knitted items get passed along. Do you know how to crochet? Yes, no. Well, I always say some basic crochet knowledge is vital when it comes to knitting. There's the crochet cast on, the crochet bind off. You can use a crochet hook to fix mistakes. I have a full video here on YouTube with basic crochet for knitters. I'll link it to you up in here. But oh, you might not have considered using a crochet magic loop to start your circular project. So when you're knitting a doily or a circular shawl or a hat top down, that cast on and those very first rounds are always a big problem. They seldom look very neat and it's fiddly as hell. So instead, simply crochet a crochet magic loop and then pick up stitches from here here so in here you don't do a single crochet anymore instead you slip those stitches to your knitting needles one at a time and i mean you can use your crochet hook to do the picking up anyway and start knitting in the round from here so first transfer those stitches to your double pointed or circular needles, whatever you feel like using, and then start knitting in the round. Let me know if I should publish a slow motion tutorial of this technique on my second YouTube channel. If you don't like to use crochet hooks, you can of course do the exact same with your knitting needles. You can knit a perfect eye cord in the round and then pick up stitches one at a time. I recently uploaded a tutorial to my Patreon account where I show you how to do that. So, how do you like my knitting hacks? Were some of them familiar or everything new? Again, please comment with any tips or hacks that you found super helpful, saved you time, money or helped you creating neater results. Happy knitting and enjoy the rest of your day.